So today I'm talking to my friends with Cool Season Lawns who maybe you've had some struggles this summer with disease, insects, or other brown areas, and you're wondering, can I make a recovery in my lawn this fall? The answer is yes. All it takes is a Saturday of hard work and six weeks of committed watering. If you can do that, you can get the same results that we did in this video. What you're seeing here is a cool season lawn in North Dakota that went through a major drought during the summer of 2021. And we came in about the second half of August and we got these results in just about three weeks. Now the strategy is twofold. The first thing is we're gonna work on your existing grass to get it healthier and thicker and greener. No matter how bad you think it is or how dead you think it is, I promise you that some of it's going to come back and we're gonna take that and amplify it and make it grow thicker than you ever imagined. And then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna overseed with some fresh grass seed to help fill everything in as well as if there's any bigger bare spots, we're gonna help those to get thicker a whole lot quicker. So you see the results and I'm gonna stop right here and tell you, yes, you can do this and it's not that difficult. In addition to this video, I have a full guide. It's 41 pages of step-by-step -step instructions on everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video as well as a whole lot more answers to your questions that'll come along all during the seeding process. I'll give you a link to it below. It's a PDF, you don't have to or your email or anything, just download it and go. And it'll help answer a lot of the questions that might come up from watching the rest of this video. So keep in mind, we got these results in about three weeks and you can do it too, but stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you why we were able to get these results so quickly. Hey y'all, wanted to break in here real quick. I'm out at the old Freedom Factory doing a little spraying and praying. And I wanna emphasize something. Before we get to the actual steps of seeding and spraying and praying and all that, I wanted to just back up and say, you need to get your watering plan down. You need to be able to water this. Seedings fail mostly because of lack of water. And in fact, what I would like you to do is start watering a day or two and especially water the night before your seed down day. So if you're gonna do all your seeding and all that tomorrow, water the lawn the night before. Even two nights before would be great. We want some soil moisture present when we take on this task. So I had them water last night and you can see now the soil is soft. That's just from one watering. So it just shows you think your soil's terrible and oh it's dry and cracked. Well, hey, just water it. It's not so bad. Just water it. And so with that, now let's get out the seed down day and let's throw it down and hope for the best. So step one is to cut the lawn. Now you want to cut it about two notches lower than you normally would. So somewhere just under three inches will be fine. The reason that we wanna cut the lawn first is because we're gonna be putting some fertilizer in here. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be stimulating the existing grass to grow. And that's part of the process. But because we're also putting seed down, you're not gonna be able to mow the lawn for probably three weeks or so. And so that lawn's gonna get overgrown. So if you cut it a little bit lower right now, that'll just help us down the road. As well as a lower cut lawn is going to allow the seed to nestle in a little bit better because we wanna get it down to where the soil is. So don't scalp it, but also don't be afraid to take out a little bit bigger bite than you normally would. Like I said, two notches lower all good. Now step two is to spread your seed. You'll just need a spreader for this and every seed blend is a little bit different. If you want my recommendation on what to get, I've got two that I really like. I've got the double dark Kentucky bluegrass mixed with rye grass seed. That one's going to be really easy to grow. It's got the rye in there that comes up in three or four days and the Kentucky bluegrass brings it in on the back. Super dark color. I'll give you a link to that. Or the Double Dark brand has also now come out with a Turf Type Tall Fescue blend for those of you down in the transition zone. Three types of Turf Type Tall Fescue, Blue Tag Certified, Zero Weed Seed. I'll give you links to those two seed blends below. They'll match with just about any lawn in an overseeding situation, and they're definitely improved cultivars that'll help your lawn overall. And now here's a little bit more detail on spreader settings for seed and actually applying the seed. So this is a 50 pound bag, and if we're gonna go with the rate, and the overseeding rate is five to eight pounds. So actually, if we do the lower rate of five pounds per thousand, we can do the entire lawn with just this one bag. So I think that's what we'll do. No need to go too crazy. And actually, I'd rather go lighter on the seed because we're gonna show people just how fast and, and good we can make the lawn look with the existing grass too. All right, so I think what we should do, you know, there isn't really a spreader setting for seed. So usually I just recommend you start fairly low and just kind of see how it goes. Take a look here. Yeah, that's not gonna let very much out at all. So we'll start, yeah, you go up a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Okay, bro. Let's dump in half the bag to start. Okay. You're gonna need a, a knot. Oh, he's got man hands. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. Ugh. It's like a. It's like those guys that used to come to your church and rip phone books in half and stuff. You know those guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. I ain't doing it. Yeah. Keep trying. I mean, you could keep trying if you want. Oh, finesse now. Posable thumbs. All right. Okay. Half the bag? Half the bag. Oh, beauteous Maximus. 
got his edge guard on because we obviously don't want to throw up into the into the beds there. Yeah. All right, go for it. We'll keep an eye on it. Ooh, that's a nice heavy rate. I like it. Oh yeah, that looks good. People tend to get really hung up on the spreader setting for the seed, but you're rarely going to find a spreader setting actually on the seed bag. So what I recommend you do is only start with half the bag. This way, that's all you're risking. How's it looking? Are you running out? Nope. Okay. Start at a lower spreader setting like we do and cover the whole lawn and then see how you did. If you came up short, then you know you need to close it down a little. If you had some left over, then you know you can open it up. And that's what we did. We put the second half of the seed in and we opened it up a little more and then went out and had a little fun. We also put down some extra in the thin spots because that just makes you feel better. Plus it's fun to sling seed in those bare spots and then come back and see how they did later on. Oh yeah, thin spots right here. Here, get down in here. So what you do, seriously though, you see we got a thin spot here. Now you don't want to go too bad, but you do put a little bit. See how it just, just supplement slightly in the thinnest areas like this. That'll make you feel better too. And really that's part of this is we want to care about your feelings. And when you put more seed down, you just feel good. When you feel good, you get better results. Love your philosophy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, got to, got to work on the windage. <laughs> At North Dakota. Yeah, let's build houses in the middle of a wind tunnel. That's a, that's a great idea. Step three is to apply starter fertilizer right on top of that seed that you just put down. Again, this is a balanced 12-12-12 right here. Give you a little bit of everything, a little of this, a little of that, up, down, all around. It's just what you need to get the existing grass growing and turning green and getting thicker, as well as to help that seed boost up once it starts rooting. All right, so that's good. And then I left him another bag because this is for the second application. You do two apps of this. So he'll do a second app 15 days later. Next, we're going to apply liquid aeration, which is going to dive down into the soil and break bonds and loosen things up. So as we're rooting with our existing grass and our new grass seed, it's easier to get down. The second thing that's involved here is Hydrotain Moisture Manager. This is gonna help keep moisture all around the root zone of the existing lawn, as well as again, that new seed as it grows. And then third, we're gonna apply Mesotrione. Mesotrione is a pre-emergent weed control, but the other bonus you get with it, because you're gonna spray it as a blanket spray, is it's gonna kill a lot of the existing weeds in the lawn all at the same time. But the pre-emergent is really what I care most about with the mesotrione because you got to think about it. You're going to be doing a lot of watering here and that's going to be great for the grass seed in your, in your grass, but it's also going to stimulate a lot of weeds. So by applying that mesotrione that acts as a pre-emergent, lasts for about 30 days, it's going to stop quite a bit of the weeds that could be coming in or wanting to come in. And that'll help keep those weeds from competing with all this grass that we're trying to grow here all at the same time. People ask me if you need to use any kind of marking dye, but the stuff is so brown from the air eight. I mean, you can see where I've sprayed. Now, if you have a backpack sprayer, you can mix the liquid aerate, the hydrotain, and the mesotrione all into the same tank and spray it out that way, like we're doing in the video here. Or you can spray the hydrotain and the aerate through hose-in sprayers, but the mesotrione will always need to be applied at, through a pump sprayer to get the precision that we need. All in all though, I don't want you to be scared of any of this. I got a video, I got a PDF to back it up for you. I got all the information you need. Just follow the steps. It's super easy. You're not gonna hurt anything. You're not gonna burn anything. There's nothing here to fear. All of this is super easy. You can do it and you'll have success. Hey, how y'all doing? Not sure we're gonna use this, but I wanna do this quick PSA public service announcement. A lot of times people will ask me when they're spraying, hey, I, I keep spraying my feet and my legs every time I do this, what's going on? Well, the first thing is you wanna make sure when you're using the tip that you have it facing away from you. So it's kind of counterintuitive, right? What you feel like you wanna do is point it down, but you don't, you wanna point it up like that so the spray comes out. So that way when you go to push, it looks like this. So you can see that's going away from me. But really, no matter, even if you do that just right, if you're spraying in the wind and really, I mean, anything more than five miles per hour, if you're spraying in the wind and we're in North Dakota here, so the wind is whipping pretty decently up to 10, 10 miles per hour, this is what's gonna happen. So 
if you find yourself constantly getting sprayed or getting the bottoms of your feet wet, it may be just that you're spraying in the wind. And step five is seed coverings. You're gonna wanna have something to put on top of the seed, especially in the thinnest areas, because that's gonna help with erosion control. In the past, we would use peat moss. Peat moss works great, you can get it anywhere. However, sometimes that's a little bit too light, fluffy and airy, and it can wash away. So I like Greenview Seeding Success, which uh, I'll give you a link below to that, but it's basically uh, pellets of recycled paper that when it gets wet, it kind of spreads out. That works really well. It reminds me of hydro seeding, except it's not mixed in a tank like that. You're putting it on dry and letting it spread out that way, but it does work fairly well. You can also find seed coverings at places like Tractor Supply and Ace. After all that, you're good to go. Now it comes down to the watering and you wanna water two to three times a day and you wanna get the top one half to three quarter inches of soil wet when you do. So what you wanna do is to put your sprinkler out there, let it run, when you, when you think you've put enough down, turn it off, go out and just stick your finger, poke it down through the lawn in several places. And as long as the top half to three quarter inch of soil is wet, do that two to three times a day for 21 days. And then you can kind of get into the next phases of the grow in. I'll also give you a link to my Facebook group below where you can join in because lots of our community are gonna be doing these exact same steps this year and everyone helps everyone out. Okay, so back to our lawn in North Dakota. How were we able to get the results that we did so fast? It's because of one thing. We took advantage of nature. Cool season lawns, that's Kentucky bluegrass, turf type tall fescue, perennial rye. Those lawns, they have two growth spurts during the year. There's spring and fall. And the fall growth spurt is what we're coming up to now. And you can see that naturally these lawns are going to want to start growing anyway. It's just part of their nature. They want to pack on the pounds and the roots, store everything up for winter. And so they go through this growth spurt in the fall. We're taking advantage of that because you do have some existing grass there. As you may have noticed, this strategy is not a burn it all down and start over strategy. There are times when you're gonna need to do that, but this is for those of you that just have an overall thin lawn or one that was damaged by disease or insects, and you just wanna bring it back up to a better state. You're doing this process, so you are gonna have some grass that's there. That grass is already gonna be stimulated to take off because it does that naturally in the fall, and now we're gonna bomb it with some fertilizer and some biostimulants to really push it, and on top of that, we're gonna water it a lot. The last piece is the weather is gonna be more mild and milder weather, cool season lawns like mild weather. So we're kind of taking advantage of its natural its natural ability to grow, nature's ability to get more mild now, and our ability to hit it with water and lots of fertilizer, primarily nitrogen, that's gonna push that existing lawn to really grow and then that grass seed just fills in along the sides and kind of is like the icing on the cake in those thinner areas. So the bottom line is if you have a cool season lawn and you're watching this video right now in late August or September and you'd like to do these, this process, now's the perfect time to do it. I've helped thousands of homeowners get beautiful lawns in just this amount of time over the years and you can do it too. Now, if you wanna know the exact best time for you to seed, because the exact best time is when your soil temperatures are falling to 70 degrees out of summer, how do you know when that is? You can download my free app. It's called Yardmaster. I'll give you a link below. Download my app and it'll tell you the exact time when your soil temperatures hit 70 degrees here coming out of summer and going into fall. It'll give you that exact timing and tell you the exact best time for you to seed to even have the best success. Lastly, I did a full podcast where I went over the strategy. And so if you prefer not to read the PDF, but you'd like to hear a podcast of all of that, I did that last week too. And I'll link that in the show notes below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have great success this season and I'll see you in the lawn.